Well, hello. Welcome to our Sunday night coffee talk. I see Attila being silly, saying he is first. Yeah, well, but I'm also glad to see you because I know that I haven't been running you ragged this weekend. Air front auntie, how's the scrapbooking going? I've seen the pictures, it looks amazing. Hi, Sharon, good to see you. And Tutu Q Cat, hey, long time no see. So I know other people are gonna be a little bit tardy, but I have kind of a lot to go on here. So I'm sort of gonna get started. Uh, the dish I'm making tonight is a uh, Hungarian pork pole. Uh, the pork pole is technically a beef and onions dish. And I did cheat just a little bit in my liner here. I've already sauteed uh, some strips of bacon. And hey, right. Hi, Rick Wayne, welcome, and Carrie. So let's see. Um, basically, as I start talking about it, Jennifer, hey, long time since I've been able to see you. So when I was researching this dish, there were no two recipes the same, all with lots of similarities. And we'll talk about the history, and I'm gonna tell you that I basically combined uh, several recipes to come up with uh, my own uh, variant, and then I've done some naughty things on the keto vacation of it. So, but I wanna get this going a little bit because it is a lengthy cook, uh, especially for our Sunday night. Hey, Gigi's here, welcome. Uh, let's see. All right, anyways, so what I do is I've got my bacon, and I like the explanation that someone gave for that, and that is that in a lot of the recipes, well, these recipes start off with lard, um, but also they're like, but at the end of the recipe, sometimes people add pork, sometimes they add other bacon, sometimes they're adding kielbasa sausage. So why not add that flavor from sauteing up the the bacon right in there so you get that nice brawn going. And I was like, yes, that's the solution. That's absolutely the answer. So it's, so I'm using bacon fat and I'm just gonna leave the bacon in there because who doesn't love bacon? I love bacon. The next thing I have is my little tiny finely diced onions. And uh, I have red pepper Technically, it should be green pepper, but when I went to the grocery to get the pepper, the green peppers did not look good. And I was like, well, I'm going rogue anyways. So I'm sorry, Hungarian people, come after me if you want to. I'm doing the best I can. And so some of it is maybe not the most traditional, but it's within a curve. So the red pepper plays real nice though in the flavor profile. So we're just gonna go ahead and toss that in here the onions and the pepper. And we'll be able to talk quite a bit very shortly when we get this going in there. I'm not gonna cook it down because it can cook in the pressure, but I do like to at least get it in there and get it started so that it can pick up some of those flavors from the bottom. But as you recall, we're about to pressure cook. So the most important thing with the Instant Pot is liquid. And uh, let's see, oh, Carrie says, such a pork and good video. Oh, I, I love it. Sharon says, watching in the living room TV at the life size Matreya. My goodness. So, beef bone stock. Uh, some people put water, other things. I'm like, I like the flavor. And a lot of the recipes talk about adding beef bouillon. I'm like, well, instead of bouillon, there's go beef stock. And uh, in order to pressurize, there needs to be liquid from the very beginning if there's not you're going to get burn and uh if it burns uh it means that it has to take forever to be able to open the pot again so that you can fix it even if it's not burnt it's just a it's a really unpleasant so you'd want to make sure there's enough liquid in there in the six pot instant pot in the six six quart instant pot you need at least at the bare minimum, half a cup of liquid, a cup is better. In the larger Instapot, the eight quart, you need a cup to start at minimum 
and it's better if you have two. And there. Uh, let's see. Hey, Kato Simple, good to see you. He says, uh, you wouldn't come after me. Have a, I feel like she's feisty. I am feisty. I don't know if I'm very feisty today, though. Today, I'm like, wow, I'm kind of ready to uh, go to bed. <laughs> anyway, so let me keep this going. So I've got my liquid in there now. So now we can go ahead and add the other two flavorings. Tomato seemed to be a little bit controversial back and uh, back and forth. No tomato, add tomato. The, the sauce should be only paprika. It's not a tomato sauce. What do you think this is? Goulash? I mean, it was very controversial. And then there was the other side, which was like, tomatoes are, uh, are a core of stew. How dare you not put them in? So I went with tomato because tomatoes are delicious. And uh, I don't know. They seem stingy with the garlic. Most of the recipes would say like two cloves. So, you know, I, I need more garlic in my life. So I used five five cloves of finely minced garlic. So let me just get that a nice little mix in here. And then here we're going to go with the next things. I have caraway seed uh, that I ground up in my uh, mortar and pestle. So it's just a, it's a half a teaspoon. So not a ton, but just enough to give it a little of the taste. If you don't know about caraway seeds, caraway is what uh, goes into rye bread that makes it taste like rye bread. So we're going to start with our seasoning. Salt and pepper. You, need, you, know, you can adjust that to taste, but I find that you need some for the initial cook. And then afterwards, if you want more salt, you can add it. And then four, plus a little bit more, tablespoons of Hungarian sweet paprika very important that it's the Hungarian sweet paprika, just like the paprikash. And in fact, the dishes seem very similar, don't they? But it does need to be that much. That's uh, important. Like, uh, you know, uh, there's lots of jokes about like, man, maybe we could just eat the paprika right from the, uh, from the container. But it's essential to the for pulp. It's a beef and onion stew. And then, of course, I have my beef, which I is uh, just like I showed in the chili. It's the, the chuck roast that I cut up into little quarter-inch cubes. Well, half-inch cubes, I suppose. Half-inch cubes. Uh, and then I touched it with my hands. Now I'm going to have to go wash my hands. So we're going to get that in, give it a mix, and then we'll seal it up. Let me toss in the trash. I probably could have just tossed it in the sink like I normally do, but I don't know. There we go. I did mention that we're, we've had a long weekend, so is my uh, decision making good today? I'm going to go with no. It's not, but that's okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Attila says he doesn't know if you want to say, come at me, bro, to Hungarians. It's similar to saying it to Ukrainians. That's fair. I, I meant verbally on the internet, the nice come at me, not the, uh, don't come at, don't come after me. So, but, but you can certainly tell me that I'm doing uh, this dish a disservice because it's probably true. And so I'm sorry about that part, but I assure you it's got um, the passion in it and we're making it Nice. Now, the main thing that I will tell you, though, as I give this a nice little stir here, getting some of that flavors in, I'm going to add two bay leaves. So, and I'm just going to tuck those in. Hopefully, we'll find them at the end to pull them out. But if not, well, when it gets into my bowl, eventually we'll figure it out. Spoon rest. And now the hard part. The waiting. We're going to put this on pressure cook. Pressure on high for 25 minutes. So now we have ages and ages to talk because it'll take uh, a long time to come to pressure because it's very full. 
And on top of that, yeah, so in addition to being very full, uh, it's got, then it's going to have like another half hour. We're going to run over on time tonight, and that's okay. We'll, uh, we're used to our long live streams in this keto community, right? I don't know why I have my scissors out. Let's put those away. All right. The last thing I have is some sour cream, and we'll enter that. We'll put that in at the end. Now, one of the things that I was looking at, and I was thinking about with for cult and keto, I'm not sure that it's technically for cult because one of the things I didn't do because of well, being keto is it, it's a, uh, I didn't make the roux or a cornstarch slurry or anything to thicken it. So I'm kind of like really skirting that line into goulash. I mean, they're almost the same thing. Goulash is a thinner sort of soup. So I don't know. Like I said, it, it might be. Now, the Procolt has a long history though. It's a, it's a, again, a, another food of the peoples. It was, uh, uh, it's been around since like the 10th century. It was made uh, often for field workers by shepherds. And so it's got that uh, real working. That's why it's a good, heavy, hearty dish, which uh, we like in keto communities, right? So this is meant to sustain you and to uh, help keep you healthy. So that's the best thing. And it's also eaten all over Central Europe. So let's see. Oh, and Jennifer says she she has a pound uh, of Hungarian smoked paprika, uh, no sweet. Oh, oh yeah, the smoked paprika. So you'll just be making a different dish, but yeah, you don't want the smoked or the spicy. You would want the you want the sweet for the for this, just the same as the paprikash. They, that's just what they use. So let's see. Uh, more hellos back and forth. So, okay. All right, then let's talk about my other fun new toy. And uh, Sharon mentioned she sees my cream whipper, but oh, here's where the excitement happens. This is not a cream whipper. Oh, I have to get something from the fridge. It's not cream, it's really cold coffee. So, Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, because it's not usually my intention to show you fancy, expensive gadgets that we can't all just run and buy, but uh, there are lots of ways that you can get things like Amazon rewards and save them up for eventually for a bigger purchase, but it does have ongoing costs. You guys, this, that looks, it does look like the cream whipper. However, it takes nitrogen cartridges, not the N2O, that's the nitrogen, ox the nitrogen oxide that goes in the cream whipper. This is nitrogen. And uh, this is, it is a whipper, but it's for nitrogen infusion. So, uh, and it's just like your cream whipper too. If you have one of those, it has the, the, the piece, you know, the spout. Uh, whereas your cream whipper has some different shapes. This one is a very focused and it's, uh, it is detachable for cleaning. Let's get that back on there. I'll need that. So, let's see. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our ice cold coffee. I guess I could leave that on. It's meant for pouring. And I'm going to pour my coffee into here. Do, do, do. My lovely cold brew. Give a swish to make sure any of those fines from the bottom go ahead and have a chance to make it in there. And perfect. I have one quart of coffee, so obviously it's more than one cup, but that's okay because it'll keep in the fridge. So I'll be able to clean that off. You take your nitrogen cartridge and you're going to put it in here. You're going to take your piece here, screw it on, You guys figured out what I'm making yet? If you're guessing cold brew, uh, uh, if you're guessing nitrogen uh, cold brew, 
nitro cold brew coffee, you'd be correct. Check this out. We're going to screw this on, and it's going to puncture. Let me make sure. It's going to puncture, and we're going to hear a whoosh. I don't know if the camera will clear it out, but. Boy, it didn't. It was very soft, so you probably didn't hear it, but it all just went rushing in, and my entire canister just got, like, super, super cold. So we're going to just make sure this has a second. And now you do shaking, just like your cream whipper. Do, do, do. Make a little exercise with nitrogen cold brew. And so, but like I said, unfortunately, this device is expensive. Hey, Cindy, good evening. Nice to see you. And Hungry Heath hey, and, uh, and the warden. So what are you guys having for dinner? Because I know this is about your supper time. And I always love hearing your recipes. I'm like, come on, come to pressure. It's been like 30 seconds. So, all right. Now, I don't think this discharged properly, but there we go. It did. It always gives like a little off gas that, can, that I'm never too sure about. But now this cartridge is expended, and it can be recycled. So uh, I was going to set that aside to the recycle. You can keep this on here to keep the dust out. Some of the uh, whippers have a dust cap, but this one didn't come with one. So I've written a letter to ask if, if there is one. It's just not threaded smoothly, so I just want to put that on there. There we go. So again, you can give it a couple more shakes. I feel it. You can definitely feel it uh, when you give it a little shake up. And now the trick is, just like you're doing with other things, uh, you're going to hold it upside down. And when we spray it, we're going to spray it against the wall of the glass. So I know that it won't be that clear on camera, but there you go. And you can see it now how it's got like all that nice foam, just like when you do, you know, you're doing a beer. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but I want to bring it up and hopefully you'll be able to see, if I'm careful, the cascading that you see in cold brews. And then you see it coming to, you know, just starting to lift up at the bottom. So if you've ever ordered those nitro cold brews and you recognize, you can see the foam head start uh, coming up on top too, just sort of, uh, developing so that's my excitement and like I said unfortunately because the device can be very expensive if you don't have like some uh, rewards and coupons and all of that stuff or in exchange for it uh, because to buy it would be about a hundred and seventy five or eighty dollars so unfortunately it's not something that I can say is a reasonable or affordable device but if you are a frequent drinker of nitro cold brews, over time it will uh, buy, it will spend for itself. And if you are watching on the camera, you can see how it's, it is really slowly cascading, but you can see the uh, rise as it continues to settle. And you can see, man, oh, I just got, uh, it's such a perfectly lovely head. Like, I can't, I just, I think it's a lovely thing, so yeah. And Cindy says we make coffee look so good. Well, but you know what? I know that you don't like coffee, and actually, as I recall, you don't like tea either, do you? Is there a chance that you like herbal teas? Like, uh, do you want to maybe at Keto Palooza try some of my blue pea flower? I could tell you, you can nitro infuse any liquid. So if you want, we could infuse... Uh, uh, we can infuse the uh, herbal teas. Uh, and Gigi is asking if you need to take the cartridge out before dispensing, and the answer is yes. But also, I don't know why. I just know that that's the instructions, and so I followed it. You can see now my, my uh, it has fully cascaded, and I've got my uh, coffee, and now I need to put my straw in. 
delightful. Mm. It's very important to get a little bit of that head, right? So, okay. So no herbal tea either. Let me think, you know, we could nitro infuse bone broth. That would be hilarious. We could, we could do that. Although I think a better thing to do with soup would be to use the, the uh, N2O cream whipper and, uh, and foam that. That would, that would be, uh, because I've used the cream whippers for things like hollandaise and stuff, but that's the N2O, not the nitrogen. Let's see. And uh, Gigi says she's only used hers for whipped cream, but she sees another use in your future. So just so you're aware, uh, the nitro cartridges and the N2O cartridges, it, the heads are not the same, so they're not compatible. Uh, your cream ripper, ripper would be a different head. The container is the same, but the head device is different, and uh, the cartridge sizes are not identical. Oh, the excitement, you guys. I'm right here by the Instant Pot, and it's making that little s which means it'll be up to pressure soon. So I'm going to throw this in the fridge where it can just stay. And now in the morning, I'll have an awful, another lovely cold brew. So, oh, yeah, Jennifer says, what about an electrolyte beverage? Cindy, what if we took a salt, a salty packet and, and nitro infused? I think that would be hilarious fun, too, and worth trying. Not about trying just about anything, but, but they use these things to like uh, fast infuse. There's a, a, you know, fast infuse for different flavors of alcohol. So I feel like you could, there's an opportunity, but it is, like I said, not the, for a home use, it's not as wide a variety as uh, you might. And Carrie's asking if I saw his uh, comments. And so uh, the answer is I probably have to put back up. So let's see. Oh, well, Cindy, there's another idea. What about hot cocoa? Do you do hot cocoa? We could definitely nitro infuse hot chocolate. Ooh, what if we did the caramel vibes salty? Oh, it can't be hot chocolate, though. It'd have to be cold chocolate. I have to think about this some more. Oh. The little valve just popped up, which means it'll turn soon to being pressurized. Keto Simple is asking, what's the benefits of nitro infusion? Um, so there's a few things. It's not like, okay, when you say benefits, I tend to think of things like health benefits, and there's not really a health benefit to it. It's a, a texture. Uh, it also lifts and smooths the flavor of the liquids. Uh, I don't know. If how to explain lifting, but uh, if you want to think of a brighter and a sweeter taste. And Jennifer, I don't know the answer to your question. You're asking if this is a form of, is this a form of nitro vessel dilator, which I do not know the answer to that question. I can probably look it up. Oh, and Carrie had some uh, punny comments. I don't, I didn't catch them, so I'm sorry, but uh, that happens sometimes. So, but I know that we always enjoy your jokes, so don't worry. So, even if we missed it, they'll come up in the replay, and also we can see them, you know, as we read through it. So, people will love your jokes because they are always quite funny. My Instant Pot's going, it's looking happy. And even though the little button went up, it did not say, it's not counting down yet. So, I'm dying here. I would like my dinner. So, well, I just have to leave it be. I say as I press something. Okay. I just double checking, making sure I had properly sealed it, but it's good. Let's see. Uh, but I'm not seeing anything else after Carrie saying he has some funny comments. There's some. Oh, and then, but Kerry does say he has seven days before he gets the two years of no coffee. Yeah, I'm, yay, it did it. It just popped over. Excellent. We're counting down 25 minutes. 
then it has to, uh, we have to leave it for 10 minutes to rest, and then we can uh, go the thing. Oh, oh, Mary, thank you. Oh my gosh, I feel like a dummy. I'm not firing on all cylinders today. Uh, let's see, Marion got the joke, it's nitroglycerin. Oh my goodness. Uh, Jennifer, uh, let's see, uh, Rick Wynn says, she thinks she's asking about nitric oxide. I don't think this is the same thing. It's not. The nitric oxide would be the N2O for the cream whipper. Ah, the warden's back, had to make coffee. So what coffee are you having tonight, the warden? Uh, Keto Simples, yeah, he's had a Guinness draft with the nitro ball in it. He's had a, uh, and had a nitro cold brew once. So yeah, so I'll tell you that the, the Guinness draft with the nitro ball is tasty, but if you ever have the opportunity, and I know the Keto Police are gonna not love this thing here, I'm gonna say if you are ever in Ireland and in the bar, get yourself a real Guinness right out of the tap. Oh my God. Uh, I don't know what we do different here in the United States, but they are not the same. And I have to tell you that if you are someone who likes beers uh, and you are okay with the experience of uh, going off for a minute, that would be one thing that I would say is probably worth the difference in the experience. So. And uh, Keto Simple validates. If he's in Ireland, he'll have a real Guinness. Keto police can join him. That's right. Keto, the food police, nobody likes them. So, But, yeah, so I think the nitro infusion, it, again, it just really brightens it up in the flavor profile and uh, smooths out the... I know it's weird to say, like, as if the texture is vastly different, but the texture is different. So, uh, and to really, it really highlights the natural sweetness off of the coffee bean. So, oh, uh, Warren's having bone Santa flavor, which is a cranberry cream creme brulee. Ooh, that makes me want creme brulee, but I haven't made one in, gosh, ages. So, oh, let me bring this over. I might pop it in the oven on warm to keep it. So with the pork colt, normally it's served with a, a spetzel. And I, don't, I have not had a successful keto spetzel, spetzel recipe. I just, it just doesn't come out. It doesn't work. I know that lots of people say that they've come up with it and I'm telling you that they are fibbers and it's not right. Um, uh, other times I've seen egg noodles and I was like, well, you know what those uh, butter noodles from uh, that ketogenic woman makes would probably work nicely, but my uh, oven is not uh, level, so they don't cook up right. And then I was like, well, maybe I should make cre the crepes and cut them up. And I was like, you know, I just really don't want to. So I'm going rogue since they say sometimes it can go on potatoes. And I just made myself a cauliflower mash. I'm like, you know what? This is, uh, is going to be where I just go completely rogue, uh, you know, tradition be damned, and I'm going to make it work for me. And I thought that the cauliflower mash would make a lovely base under a uh, paprika, tomato-y, delicious stew. So that's what I did. I'm going to actually put it in there and keep it warm. That way it'll get too hot and I can burn my hand when I take it out. Oh, Cindy likes the healthy noodles from Costco. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've eaten those sometimes. I, I don't know. I like, sometimes I'm like really love them and other times I'm just like, and you ever just go through that with cycles where sometimes things are really good and other times you're just like, nope. And right now I'm in that nope kind of phase. So... It is what it is, and we haven't had a cauliflower mash in a long time, and I thought that since we have uh, several types of chili uh, in the fridge, and then we're going to have this stew, 
was like, maybe it would be nice because I can take a cauliflower mash and I can mix in uh, cheese and a little bit of, uh, actually, I don't know if I have to add anything else. Yeah, I can mix some of it with an egg and some cheese and uh, form it into little tater tots, which would, might be nice with the chili. Uh, you know, bake them up all crispy. Uh, I call them collie browns. I don't know why, but that's what I do. So, yeah. Uh, Jennifer, yes, the nitro infusion sweetens it significantly. So that is one of the things. I just, I don't know if you consider that a benefit or not. So let's see. I'm trying to lean in. I don't know, I can't read the screen today. Blind. Let's see. Uh, oh, and the warden said, oh, they're making the newest channel members recipe. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah, if you are a member of the Hungry Heath channel, Every month they release a new recipe, and I'm just telling you, I have got some killer skills now on some of the stuff that they put out. Delicious every time, worth every penny. Uh, let's see, Carrie says he made up a phrase today to use to keep his past behind, and he said today it was what it was. That seems good. Uh, and Marianne hasn't tried any keto noodles at all. And if you don't have any reason to, there's, you know, like, again, there's like a thousand things you could do for this. And like I said, I just thought the collie mash sounded good. Like I had a craving for it. Oh, the newest recipe is email today. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to go check my emails after the live stream. So. Oh, yeah, and Carrie said he was gifted a membership to the Hungry Horde for a while by uh, Just Jason Keto. That Just Jason, Jason Keto, he's a good guy. So, really tasty. So, um, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, so I appreciate you guys being here with me. And, you know, like this weekend was a tough one. It was, it's a Ohio Con weekend. And... So it was definitely bittersweet, and I had a lot of emotion of uh, the entire range, being very angry, being very sad, being very depressed, being very uplifted, feeling treasured, feeling uh, stepped on. I, I mean, it was like, it was up and down all weekend, uh, learning new things that were on the backside that were not good, even worse than I imagined. Um, but uh, so there was a lot of that and I'll just tell you like my discords with all of the all of my anime friends have been absolutely bonkers so yeah so that's been the weekend I keep looking at the time like as if it's gonna go faster if I stare at it you know I've, I've watched pot and all that thing so let's see but uh, so I will say like you know it was a uh, we actually did go with some other uh, leadership people, especially the senior leadership. Uh, uh, we went to the place where the convention happens and we uh, we just hung out. We were, not, we were careful to not be disruptive or cause any trouble. Like, you know, we don't need the police calling and trespassing us. Uh, we just, I don't know what the right word is, but we just kind of, uh, Held close to each other uh, emotionally and uh, had some grieving process together and, and then looked forward to our future ventures. So, but I will tell you that while we didn't do nothing, the rumor mill sure has us be painted as the gangsters. My goodness. Um, so, I, I wish that I was that exciting. My whole life, I've never done anything that exciting. So, you know. Oh, and uh, the warden says she enjoys the hot nitro that she gets at uh, Dutch Brothers. Yeah, I haven't researched enough to figure out about uh, doing nitro fusion for the hot beverages. So this was like my excited, exciting thing, of course, you know, and, and I do like the nitro infused tea, but suddenly I am very interested in the nitro infused bone broth. So I'm going to have to do some learning and uh, talk to some chefs and see how that goes. Or... If I need to stick to something like the N2O from the Cream Whipper, um, 
with the cream whipper, like I said, my jam there is make hollandaise and put it in that cream whipper and charge it up with the N2O. Oh my God. Now that's a delight. Put that, put that whipped hollandaise on to your asparagus and your prosciutto. Mm, delightful. Now, oh, so just, you know, like that. So in addition to all of the stuff with the convention, so last night, though, uh, some of our friends, uh, one of our friends had a, a LAN party. Yes, just like in the 80s, everybody only instead of like sitting in little uh, teeny, uh, had massive, amazing, super powerful PCs. So, and then of course we had potluck. So I took my chili and uh, I will tell you, people like the chili. So I was excited by that because, you know, uh, I'm in the Midwest and uh, all meat, no beans, uh, you know, chili is not all stuff that people are used to seeing all the time. I mean, they do see it some because here we're not too far from Cincinnati, and Cincinnati chili doesn't have beans unless you order beans on it, which is weird. So, so, but like they they were they were liking it, and they loved that I brought a big bag of shredded cheese. So, uh, you know, they were we were enjoying it. We had a good time playing. You know, there was a Overwatch and. I mean, it just was really great. And of course, you know, we were all people who used to work at conventions. So it was a, a collective, uh, a, a grieving process. Lots of uh, reminders of how we appreciate each other. And uh, it kind of reminded me a lot of how we in the keto community pull together a K KPL and remind people how much we uh, care about each other and how we, uh, uh, support you in your journey no matter where you're at if you're having a struggle um, that's okay like I know sometimes people feel like they can't go or don't want to go places if they're uh, off the off the beaten path that they've been pursuing because they don't want to feel like the keto police are going to come after them but like we're very uh, like no it's all right because you're still family you're still trying to do things for yourself and actually being in that environment might help kickstart you to uh, caring about your health in a different uh, view. So, uh, yeah. So that's those are that's a couple things here. I'm I'm looking for uh, uh, comments, uh, helping to feed my uh, comment here because we still have 13 minutes and then another 10 minutes. So, yep. Jennifer says she had to get used to the room temperature drinks. Otherwise, she just freezes trying some. Uh, Blue bowls to see if it helps. Oh, you know, I never thought about the iodine making something that might help with that. That's interesting. Oh, awesome. Terry says tomorrow he's going to be meeting with a mentor to put out red resumes. Fantastic. That's really good, Terry. I, I wish you a lot of luck with that. Uh, it's hard times right now. The job market is tough. And uh, Carrie says his church there in Texas wants to put beans in their chili. He wasn't happy with that. Oh, man, you're in Texas. Beans don't go in Texas. That's chili beans. And then Cindy says, Carrie can pick out the beans. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if I fit. I don't know if I could pick out the beans in chili. That's a that's a that's an arduous task. But that might be interesting. And Keto Simple says, we didn't bring the ruckus. You know what? We didn't bring the ruckus. But we did bring the visibility. And can I, I, I will also be honest and say uh, the convention was suffering. Uh, oh my God, it was a ghost town. So, you know, it, so it was pretty heartbreaking. But also, uh, I sat with the knowledge that we were doing, you know, what we needed to do for ourselves and to protect people. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can cut off your nose to spite your face, and you know that's that's where it's at. So the war, the warden chimes in. Beans ruin chili. It's like olives on pizza. Oh no! Hey now, don't be hating on my olives. So you'll have to. I'll just eat your olives. <laughs> But no, uh, in, in all seriousness, you know what? I know there are a lot of people who love beans and chili, and for them, by 
you know, have at it. But I will tell you that people were eating like uh, two and three bowls of our chili. So I've configured it a winner. And you know what's the funny part is it was a mediocre batch. Like, I don't know what, what was different, but it just wasn't as good as other chilies I've made. Like, it just was not as exciting. There was like a little something, something that just needed a little bit of uplift and it just didn't have it. But everybody else was bonkers about it and it was good. It just wasn't as good as others that we've made. So, I mean, some people do like pineapple on pizza and I will say I don't like pineapple in general, so I don't like pineapple on pizza. Attila only likes olives when they're soaked in gin. That's a, you know, and that's fair too. Cindy, no olives for you. You guys who hate on the olives, no worries. I got you, fam. If an olive appears on a plate, you just take your fork and just leave and just uh, just bring it over and like put it under mine and I'll take care of it for you. No worries. I'll be that friend. I'm going to use like banana on pizza. Is that a thing? Do you mean banana peppers? Or are you being silly? I'm not sure because like I feel like there's probably somebody who puts banana on pizza. Oh, Air Fry Nanny says, sorry, she couldn't chat. She's packing up now. Have a great weekend. Oh, will you be safe on that trip, man? That's a lot of stuff. But your scrapbooking event pictures looked amazing. Oh, yeah, Jennifer, a, a tamponade would be um, delicious. Ooh, maybe. Sorry. For those of you who don't like olives, but I was just, well, now that you've mentioned it, Jennifer, we should make an olive tamponade to put on the charcuteries uh, at KPL. Oh, and he says he had it last year when they were in New Zealand, and it was great. So, I am intrigued by this banana on the pizza adventure. So did was it did it go with something? Like was it paired with like I don't know. I guess that's where I'm having what was on what else was on the pizza? I guess that's what I need. Those are the facts that I need. Because I can picture a banana pairing with a lot of weird things, but like for some reason the cheese and the banana sounds weird to me. So now I have I just have, I just gotta know. You're gonna have to share. Uh, Carrie says he had the news that hits a uh, local channel on here and they do a, a wacky Friday eats and they did a banana mixed with ketchup. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. That's not okay. I mean, I, I guess it is if some people like it, but oh, that just like turns my stomach. I, I for one, will not be eating ketchup on a banana. But, uh, Okay, Hunger Heat's gonna find the photo and tag me on Facebook. I'm really intrigued. Like, I'm, I'm making fun of the ketchup of banana, but you know what? There's always somebody who likes something that sounds really weird, and to them, the flavor profile is just magically delicious, like Lucky Charms. So, I mean, maybe there's something to it, and now I'm like wondering if like, is it, it's the acidity in the tomato that off, the, the acidity plus the sweet that plays with the banana uh, or maybe the vinegar highlights the banana. I don't know. I can't wrap my brain around it. Let's see. <laughs> two, two, two cat says I was right. No, 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 the ketchup on banana. <laughs> okay. Hungry. He says another thing they said they like to do is wrap the banana in bacon and put it on the grill. Okay. All right. We're getting somewhere now. Now there's some context to something that I can envision. Bacon, avocado, banana, red onion, feta, mozzarella, and parmesan. Okay. I Okay. I can envision it now. You know what? Those are a lot of non-traditional uh, ingredients. Uh, okay. I can see it now. I wonder if they make it slightly less sweet bananas you know, more on the greener side, so it's not like a, the mushy candied sweet. Oh, thank you, the warden. I appreciate that. 
and then Jennifer says in grade school she was dared to try mustard on a brownie and it was great that's awesome again that's another one of those things you know the mustard is a weird ingredient it goes a lot of places where you think it shouldn't so you know I don't know that I'm like excited to jump and try mustard on my brownie but uh, at least I can see it sort of uh, mustard is a strange uh, fellow guys I can't stand it it's taking so long I'm so hungry but it's all right five minutes five minutes more on the pressure cook and then 10 minutes to, to rest we can handle it so let's see what does that mean oh, we'll see how it goes it's gonna it's gonna we might go over does anybody mind if we're over i don't think so i mean we talk all the time all the time for hours so we'll be fine if we're over like 15 minutes right so anyways so I know that there are meetups coming up. Uh, Keto Simple or Jennifer, if you want to say when the Indianapolis meetup again, because I'm getting confused on the dates. There is, uh, there's the one, uh, who is running the one on February 3rd at the Smoky Bones? That's someone else. Oh, Cindy, I'm making a variation of Hungarian for Colt. So uh, Hungarian pork cold is a beef and onion stew. Uh, it's sort of an early shepherd's uh, meal for, uh, you know, hardworking, very hearty. It's made uh, well, from beef, onions, and because it's Hungarian, full of paprika. Um, four generous heaping tablespoons of paprika. Uh, the sweet, oh, Sabrina Cable, that's, that's it. Her name was gone. That's the one uh, on Smoky Bones. And then the other Indianapolis meetup is going to be May 18th. And the one on May 18th, that's the, is that going to be at the community center or, or somewhere else? Awesome. I'm, yeah, I don't know if I'm making it to the one on February 3rd. Yeah, I have. So I had my uh, job stuff. Tuesday, they did another round of layoffs shocking everyone because people didn't know they were going to happen so they laid a bunch of people off we're down to the bare minimum uh and then on let's see so tuesday they laid everybody off on wednesday they told managers how they were going to be reorganized and thursday i got told i was going to be moved back to a, a department but uh, the department was much smaller than in the past, but I would recognize and know everybody on the teams. And I do because they were part of my old teams before I had taken the new position. So it's going to be uh, an uptick in learning uh, where they're at now, because obviously in two years, things are not the same. But it's kind of going to be like uh, going home because they're all my same people. So this week, I'm going to be doing some double duty, trying to wrap up things for my old job and onboarding into the new position and role. So I'm um, looking forward to that. And I've got a nice little queue of things to work on. So I need to dive in uh, and do some learning, get to know how everybody works together, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so it's going to be very exciting, but also, again, like I said, so I'm not kidding when I said this was like a stressful week. And we had everything nuts during at work. And then, uh, you know, of course, then the emotion from the weekend. Yeah, oh, and, uh, you know, one minute left, you guys. And then the 10, man, that 10 minutes is gonna kill me. So let's see. Uh, Marion says, in Girl Scouts, she was dared to put peanut butter and dill pickle on a chocolate chip cookie. It was so good, she made another one. Okay. I'm like, uh, almost, I'm almost there on that. Until you got to the cookie, I was like, because the chocolate for me seems to be like the one ingredient too many. It was like a, I don't know, a plain cookie maybe. But I'm fine with the peanut butter on the pickle, and I don't know why. Again, Jennifer validates, yes. And May, May 18th, the Keto Indie Meetup. Surprise, hooray, the timer's gone off. 
I'm going to, he says, hurry up and wait. Yes. Attila agrees here and uh, reiterates, but incredible amounts of shareholder value was created. Indeed. So, but like I said, I'm really glad. I really do love the people I used to work with. It was hard to, you know, so, and I'm really, honestly, I'm just telling you, I'm really grateful to have a job because right now the market is so hard. I don't, I, I don't know. I would lose my mind. What would I do? I don't know. Buy and start a new convention? No, just kidding. Oh, there's a stress that I definitely don't want. So, I'm going to take these, like, holly rice. Okay, I'd better use a, a pad. It's only not warm, but the bowl is hotter than I want it to be for bare hands. That was my hip. So that's the collar mash. It'll be now it'll be warm and you know delightful under my stew, but it won't cool off so much that it gets cold. Very important, turn your oven off. Although, you know what, it's probably adding warmth to the house. I can't believe it that it's still uh, you know, it's still so cold, but honestly. Being, at least we're uh, comfortable inside. Uh, Marion says, until she went keto, she regularly made PB and pickle sandwiches. Interesting. I don't think I ever did that, but like I said, I have done that. Oh, oh, Carrie, that was a bad joke. A hilariously bad one. Uh, it says, I can, uh, I can pause if I use uh, uh, my bare hands, so. I'm going to take another drink here. You can tell that I'm enjoying it, though, you guys. You know that I don't normally have this much of my beverage while we sit here and shoot the breeze. And I'm going to drink it. And I, I might just be thirsty from all the activity because I'm almost done with my seltzer, too. Uh, today's seltzer, by the way, is the Polar Black Cherry. So... Let me get my little dish. It's the yellow one today. So uh, Jennifer says she's curious to try the carnivore mashed potatoes. It's a bit too much work, yet still curious. You know what? I think a lot of people really love those. Uh, they're the ones that were made with egg. And I super tasted the egg. So I wasn't wild about it, but... Uh, everyone else that I know were like, what do you mean you tasted the egg? It didn't taste like egg at all. So it was maybe just me. Maybe it was a mental thing. I don't know. But for me, I tasted egg. So I need an extra big spoon here for my collie mash. But uh, yeah, so uh, Cindy Valdez, they're so good. I, fo I followed the instructions, but they were definitely egg to me. So, but, wow, such creativity. Uh, shoot, there was something else he made recently, and I can't remember what it was that I want to have really bad. But I don't remember, but now I don't even remember. I think it was, uh, shoot. And it was something that he made out of eggs, but, darn it, I'm going to have to go look up the Chris Looks, uh, Cooks Nashville uh, channel. Darn it. It was eggs and he was blending them. Shoot, it's killing me. What the heck was it? Because I really wanted to try it. Oh, well. It'll come back later. I'll put it in the comments or something. I don't know. Or we'll just chat about it in another live stream because all of you awesome people in your live streams uh, really is nice for me. Aha, Choo 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 Cat also loves the carnivore mashed potatoes. Uh, once you make them the first time, they're not such a big deal. So it was literally just me. Yeah. Uh, Hunter, he says, uh, foul tater salad. No, they are talking about the uh, the uh, mashed potatoes uh, on the uh, uh, car the carnivore Chris, uh, Nashville Chris. Uh, he is a very inventive cook. So... Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen them, it's really interesting. You take the egg whites and you cook them and you dry them and you chop them up real small and you dry them out some more and you dry them out some more. 
so yeah. Oh, and uh, Jennifer says she liked the egg pudding recipe, but must not have blended it well enough because it was a bit grainy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, we're doing Chris Cooking Nashville. So, but, uh, now I will say that I do like the egg pudding, but I have a Vitamix. So, my Vitamix does, and it does take some extra time to blend. I will also say that I don't necessarily follow the same recipe that a lot of people, uh, I mean, it's similar. And also, despite the fact that they say don't use the pre-boiled eggs from the grocery, and I don't know, like uh, the person who made the first version of the egg pudding uh, talked on about the eggs that you buy in pre-packaged that they taste like vinegar. And I don't have that experience. I use the Costco hard-boiled eggs. And the Costco, they're cage-free, et cetera, et cetera. And they're just in water. So, and I use those, and they have no smell or no... You right there, dog? Just checking on you. My dog was coughing, so I had to make sure that he was just having a regular old dog cough. and Yes. So, but, uh, I, I digress. So, I, I use those Costco eggs, and when I do those, uh, it does not, I, I do have to blend, and I have to use some of the, the plunger thing that comes with the Vitamix to uh, squish it down a little bit. But I also use the canned coconut milk, and I know some people use that. So, sometimes I do have to add extra fluid. Uh, or it gets too thick. Uh, Hunger he says he just remembers he put out the fowl tater salad. Oops, it jumped on me. About the same time uh, that uh, they did, that uh, the Hungry Heat channel did theirs, but uh, we used pork belly, not eggs. Man, that was a good salad, too. Uh, Tutu Q-Cat uses the scrambled eggs for the egg pudding, and it comes out really smooth. Uh, Cindy says she likes to make keto chow pudding if she wants pudding. Yep. Now, I will tell you with the eggs pudding, I actually do use keto chow. I like to use the uh, full-fat coconut milk from the can with the uh, um, chocolate toffee and a little splash of butterscotch extract. And that, it comes out really nice. But I will tell you that I don't make it very often because while it's tasty, it's an awful lot of uh, fuel in a very small uh, dish. And so I find that even though it does taste good, I, I don't want to expend the, uh, the amount of, uh, I, I don't want my amount of uh, how much fuel I need in a day on a tiny bowl of pudding. So I often do a lot of different things instead. Yeah, and Jennifer says uh, she also used scrambled. Her blender is a ninja. Others said the ninja will do it, just blend it more. Yeah, you might need to scrape it down a little more, too, uh, periodically. The ninja should absolutely be able to do it. That's a tough blender. Oh, and uh, Teresa says uh, Chef, Chef at Graham's did a quick remake of Chris Cooking Nashville's mashed potato recipe. Okay. That's interesting, too. Like I said, almost everybody I know likes it. I noticed that a couple, there were a couple people uh, whose family members tasted the egg. And so I just wonder if it's just something like people who, you know, I don't know, just very, you know what, something for everybody. All I can say is it's a miracle recipe. And so I'm glad that most people love it because what a creative use of ingredients. Uh, outstanding and I really think that's a, that's amazing so I startled myself because I moved it and it made it spit a little bit freaked me out nothing's wrong I just moved it but it's almost at the I just didn't want it to go right up under my cabinet when I released the pressure so that's all 
but it made a little spit and that startled me because I wasn't paying attention. But you can tell I'm getting hungry because I'm playing with the food. Uh, Carrie, um, Carrie says we can use water in the Ninja Blender. The Ninja was in the shoe store getting some new sneakers. Oh, yeah. Carrie says the last egg pudding he did was just with water and eggs and the raspberry cheesecake keto shell. I'm sure that would work. Oh, Cindy says I could put the towel over the switch to catch the steam. Yeah, I could, but I found that, I don't know, I think I feel like there's more risk there to clog. And so I just don't, I just prefer to just, plus I like the steam. It's cold in here and we could use the humidity. Uh, Jennifer says she was skeptical about trying cauliflower rice, but she did try it at KPL, and they did a great job of it. Uh, yeah, they do do a nice cauliflower rice, and I recreated it on the YouTube after many, many requests. I ate it and figured out all, all, all the ingredients, and then I altered it to uh, uh, put a little bit more umami into it. Umami into it, yeah. So. All right, you guys. Let's get this going. There we go. It smells fantastic. So it'll take a few minutes to decompress. So I'll have to yell real loud. Let me know if this hissing is problematic. Not that I can do anything about it. Let's see. Oh, to do cat says the anticipation. We're all going to be so jealous when I take the lid off the instant pot. Yeah. The smell is already awesome. So, oh, it's And it just changed sound so you know that it's getting closer. I'm get a little bit of the water that's spitting out. So, what else do we have going on this week? I know we've got multiple live streams. What's everybody else up to? What are you all making for food this week? Uh, I don't know. I know not everybody plans out a whole week for the food, but like, uh, if you meal prep, what do you got on? The, what do you got going on? And if you don't meal prep, uh, what's your grocery shopping been like? I'm really curious to see because I'm always looking for more ideas to help with some variety. Uh, I'm especially going to be looking for something different because we've had a lot of uh, red things lately. Chili, chili, you know, pumpkin sausage soup, and uh, paprikash, and now the pork holes. So I, I think now I want to do something that's a little bit different. Um, I know that uh, Lynette had mentioned trying to... Uh, coming up with a creamy poblano soup, and I've almost worked that out, so I don't know if we'll be ready for next week, maybe the week after, but I also have um, a, a leek dish that I've been looking at, so there we go. Oh, boy. Of course, I fogged up my glasses, so let me just give this a stir. It is definitely not as thick because I used the Instapot as it would have been had I cooked it in a pot. But, oh, oh yeah. Oh, one of the bay leaves. Get that. There's one. Oops. And there's the other bay leaf. Oh, how lucky was that? Right off the bat. Just giving it a stir, getting all those good things. And so, Cindy, I did put all the ingredients in the description if you're interested, but I basically started off with the, I'm gonna put the sour cream and get that mixed in. I started off by frying up bacon, and then I added in the onions and pepper, and then I added in some tomato and garlic, and then of course the, uh, the paprika, a little bit of caraway, so. And get this in here and get it all stirred in. Uh, the sour cream seems to be a controversy. 
of whether it should be in there or not. And a lot of, uh, I mean, man, like, they were fighting about it like crazy. Like, I don't think it has to be that big of, of a fight. But, like, and then not only was there whether sour cream belongs there or not, but then there was the fight about whether it should be mixed in or put on top. And the people who want sour cream but on top are very passionate about that opinion. So, uh, naturally, I'm mixing it in. And why? Because it's easier and it'll um, help my stew along. So, all right, I'm gonna get ready to dish this up. Just do a little bit of the sour cream that needs to blend in, but only a couple little dollops and that's fine. All right, we're gonna throw down this cauliflower mash. myself a nice little cauliflower mash with a little well in it. I love to play with my food, in case you hadn't noticed. And I'll just bring this over so you can see its loveliness. And here we go. My delightful dinner is served. Look at the gorgeousness of that broth. And of course, because I pressure cooked it, you know, uh, make sure we turn that off. The meat is like super fall apart tender. Uh, I can go right in here and basically it just falls apart. Mm. Sorry, you guys have to see me do things like that, but. A real person, so I eat like a regular person. Tutu QCAT says sour cream belongs everywhere if you ask her. Uh, Cindy says we're eating out of the freezer, so very little grocery shopping needed. Tonight she made a couple of different kinds of chocolates, and tomorrow, mmm, chicken wings and drumsticks. Nice. Uh, Carrie says I'll have to plug up the leek dish. I just missed something here. Let's see. I don't know. The chat jumped in now. It's not letting me scroll. Uh, let's see. Kerry says he doesn't meal prep, but he's been blessed with the money he spent that was uh, given to uh, last month. He filled up the fridge, and the, and the church has been giving him some food. So, yeah, that sounds good, too. So, let's see. Uh, Mike Sandy says he's doing some garage tidying this week. Uh, we need smell of vision as it looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, and you, you know where the house is. I'm just saying, but... No, um, we should get together soon. But. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's super nice. So. Mm. I made the mash, but I actually think this would be really good on just plain old uh, rice and cauliflower. I can see why it would go nice on noodles. So. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go eat my dinner. Thank you so much. I treasure our time together and you guys are fantastic. I appreciate you. And I hope that uh, going into Monday, uh, you are prepared, you have a great weekend left and I'll, just, I'll see you next week on all of our other 9 million live streams so that we can keep chatting and fostering our fellowships. So you guys have a good one, bye bye.